So welcome to another week's edition of Dakota Customs Unriveted. I'm Travis Feist, owner operator of Dakota Customs and with me as always is Rob McLeod, my sales manager. What's up guys? So it's been I think what two weeks since we've done, it's been busy. Real busy. It's gotten hot. I think that's going to be implied so you can maybe just stop saying it. Yeah, but, well, yeah. we're lucky. Last yeah. year about this time we were triple digits. So, I mean, we've only got what, 93, 94, I think was the hottest, I think, that we've gotten so far, which is enough. But compared to last year, it was, it was insane for, for heat already. Good this change of pace. Year. Yeah. Everybody's in a better mood when they're cool. Yeah, that's true. Been busy um, getting cars completed. Bikes are rolling in. Um, got a lot of cool big, bikes. Big projects. Getting started, getting finished. Yep. So it's just good. Always exciting to see a new build come through the door. So which brings me to a customer that uh, I ran, I, let's see, what was it, 2016 you contacted 2016. Me, I well, believe? actually, I think it was December of 2015 that I saw, I saw one of your ads on TV and you showed some bikes in a car or whatever and stuff and i uh, i said i bet he can do this yeah you know it uh so i think it was actually 16 because i opened up this location on i i got this in june 6th june 10th of 2016 is when i actually signed a contract for this building so okay. i'm thinking december was uh, was the um, what you were thinking of? Because I think that's when I started airing my football okay. commercials. But okay. um, yeah. Jay Herman, which he owns a 1956 MGA, and it was it was a, an MGA, MG a. A highly modified. Um, I'm kind of curious, Jay. So you getting back? You reached out to me. I I know it was. It was nice out, so it must have been in the spring of 2017 then, if I remember right, because I know it was nice out, but I know it was shortly after I opened up this location, and you gave me the call to come down, and I was so excited because you were my actual, my second, well, I had the Impala, so I don't know if that really counts or not, but on, on official unrelated unknown customer you're my first one for this location because i knew i knew jason with the impala so and that kind of came with me over here with this location so you were actually the official first car to be introduced into this location so cool yeah so it's kind of a neat cool. deal yeah so 1956 why 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 mg like actually people even ask me that question like why did he do an mg well, I bought it in 1972 from a friend of mine, Patrick Thomas McGuire, but, and uh, he blew the engine on it. And so I, I paid him 200 bucks for it. What was the original yeah, motor? Yeah, the thing is stock, the stock motor. 1200 cc okay. MG. Okay. It was that what, yeah. inline four, I think? Inline were? four, yeah. yeah. But the things were built. I mean, it was a tank. It, yeah. It, it was it was a good motor and stuff, you know. But Just I was it. sitting there and well, I should redo this, you know. And I sitting there and reworking everything and stuff, and it was like, geez, I'm gonna have a hell of a lot of money stuck into this thing, and it's gonna be worth like fourteen thousand bucks. I mean, you go online and you can find them, you know, and stuff. Mm -hmm. I figured, well, what the hell. I'll take a hundred thousand into something, you know. And what <laughs> yeah, better than a fifty-six? It's, it's only a dream, right. you know. And, right. And, and it was my dream. It was. But this car was, is one of one. It's there's not another car like it. Um, no, there's yeah. no way. Well, there's there's guys that have V8s in an MG. Well, even uh, uh, Hot Rod Garage. Okay. Those guys stuck a. V8 into an MGB, you know, and they took the hood off and 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 uh, you know tore around with it and stuff, which you know, which is cool. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, hello. I mean, you know, you've got something that has a chassis weight of 1,768 pounds. Yeah. 
And I think it all kind of goes back to that instinct of how hot rodding first began was put as much power into something that is as light as possible. And that's why these cars are, have been a, a, a great platform for hot rodders. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. You know, but I didn't want it to be, I didn't want it to have, you know, this huge air I want to be cleaner, tasteful. The hair cleaner. I wanted yeah. it to be sleek. I wanted it to look like it was going 1,200 miles an hour just sitting in the, you know, right. sitting on the street. And, stuff. Mm -hmm. and it's and, got good and, lines to start. Yeah, yeah. yep, you know. yep. And they, and, and they are enhanced and stuff, you know, right. because um, went from, uh, all right, so I had the whole chassis sitting there and stuff. I bolted it onto the garage in the, <laughs> into my, onto the floor in my garage. And, well, there's no way that this is going to fit. <laughs> it, it, it ain't going to happen, right. you know. And so, um, well, why don't I do this? So I bought a Heights Independent front end, the Mustang to a front yep. end, yep. and then a Heights Independent rear end. Great kids. Yep. And uh, well, we'll go from here and stuff. And so I just used two by three channel iron off of the, cut the whole front end frame off and stuff. And it took uh, years. <laughs> right. Yeah, it, it took. It took a long time to. Well, to, that's kind of the fun of it. To though. get the chassis going and yeah. stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know how many hours I spent online and and doing this and doing that and stuff. And I got it. I got it in line. The only thing I don't like is that the rear left frame is a quarter inch higher than the rest of it. Every everybody else measures out, and I don't know where that quarter inch came from. But other than that, it's cool, and it and it drives nice. Yep. I love the way it drives. So yeah, it seems to handle really good. You know, you would think that for a short little car like this, it would be really choppy and really, you know, you'd feel every little bump in the road. But actually, you you really don't. The thing rides really well. Surprisingly, um, you know, we got the suspension set up. Uh, we we did a QA uh, coil over adjust all the way around seven way adjust and uh, man that car just rides it's so good. Even it's adding that wider track of the, mm -hmm. the heights suspension kits um, kind of gives it you know uh, a go kart you know kind of you know yep. short short wheelbase wide wheelbase yep. um, you know it's it's the same wheelbase as. Um, lengthwise as a VW Bug. Oh, sure. I, I think it's maybe an inch off. Sure. But close to it and stuff. The only thing on the front end was on an MGA it was 47 inches and on the back end it was 49 inches. Well the narrowest I could get on the front end was 50 inches from heights and on the back end i think it was 52 inches and stuff so, you know and so and there goes my quandary of well what are you going to do you know yeah, kind of stuff to and, go with it yeah. yeah yeah it's and so that's where that's where the fat fenders come from that's where all of that comes from and stuff and then uh my neighbor bruce horner um he rode uh Rough Rider Speed Center. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And and uh, he comes over and he goes, "Well, where are you going to put the exhaust?" He's like, oh. you know, <laughs> another problem. Yeah. Huh? And there's <laughs> yeah. not a lot of room it, underneath. It, no, no, yeah. there there is no room underneath and yeah. stuff. And and what I didn't want it to be, I didn't want it to look like a kit car. Yeah. I didn't want it to look like a a, a Shelby. Not. No disrespect to Shelby, mm -hmm. I, you know, it's an MGA. Right, Hello. not Shelby, yeah. It, it, it's not a Shelby, it's, yep. not a, it's not fiberglass. I mean, you put a magnet anywhere yep. on here, there's no fiberglass. Right. Right? That's it's, funny, you, uh, I didn't know this car was steel until about, I don't know, two months until I was like, uh, we were working on it. I was like, oh, geez, Jesse, I think um, you had a little chip in it. I was like, 
Oh geez, I hope that I messed up the fiberglass or nothing like that. And then uh, Jay's like, fiberglass? This is steel. I was like, oh, okay. Now yeah. this is full metal jacket. Yeah, yeah. That's, and then once. Which is cool. It, the aura of the car kind of came over me. It's like, okay. So they, they built these out of aluminum and steel these cars that they were produced. So I believe yeah. the doors, hood, and fender were all, or the doors, the hood, and the trunk are all aluminum, and yeah. the rest of the car. It's a bonnet, it's not a hood. Yeah, come on, Travis. Oh, okay, yeah, no. sorry. It's British. a bonnet, the yeah. trunk, and the two doors are all aluminum. All aluminum. But. I stand corrected, yes. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. You know, if we're gonna be English, we're gonna be yeah. English. Yeah, there you go. Well, there's only so far we can go with a small block in it, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, yeah. which is which is fine too, and, and it it's, took me back to, to, um, bitch and rides, and I can't remember his name. I think it's Chris. Uh, one of the guys that worked there is so, really cool. I mean, those guys are freaking awesome. Oh yeah, absolutely. And not putting anything against you guys and stuff, but anyway, he goes, there aren't any metric, you know, bolts. In a hot rod. Yeah. Wrong. Yeah. We yeah. don't put we don't put <laughs> metrics in a hot rod. Yeah. yeah they yeah. they frown upon that. But yeah. in this case, we do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's it's interesting. It, again, this car, you almost really have to see it. It. What's what's hard is we've had it to a couple car shows now since we've been done with it, and. It, it seems like even when we had here at the shop, people are drawn to it because it, it's so different. It's not, you know, it's not a Chevelle, it's not a, an Impala, or it's not a, a Nova. They just want to know Ford. what it is. You know, you know, they don't get drawn to it because oh, that's a that's a Hemi Cuda. They want to check out a Hemi Cuda. They want to know what's in this car, what's been done to this car. Right. It's almost like um, a matter of, you know, the car in question. You know. Yeah. It's it's it brings people you know intrigues them you know they want to know what what it is and even when we had it here before we had to paint it and mock up you know I, we'd give tours with customers and they'd come walk in and the first thing they would do is they look at it and they're like well what's this thing because it's it's you know people come up and they, they said is it a cobra no is it a is it a bo old boxer no it's not an old porsche you know it's, it's like people are looking at it and you know they're trying to figure it out and then when you tell them it's a it's a 56 british mg and they give you, they're like, really? What the? Yeah, they, yeah. they look at you and then when you almost show them a, a factory, what it, what it would look like stock, and they can see the relevance, but then they're like, wow, you know, it's crazy. This thing's got that fat tire look. It's it's just like a pit bull, you know, the thing's just fat and, and just, it looks amazing. And people are just like blown by it because it's I, so unique. I it's love the boat tail. Yeah, it's, yes. you know, it just slopes down into, you know, um, I grew up in the Popeye era. Brutus had the coolest freaking cars ever. You know, he was always driving around and it would rear up and whoa, stretch out and go and yeah. stuff, you know. The only thing that I should have done here and stuff, I should have, I should have lengthened the front end about six inches just to just to give it that much more of uh, the quintessential uh, yeah. Bucati you know yep. I mean all of those cars you know there's just there's a football field out front you know type of thing right stuff, you know which made to cut wind which and even then so I was 22 <laughs> you know, yeah. but no, even then and stuff, he's got to want to build a car like that and stuff. You know, I was a little bit younger than 22, but it was just that and stuff. That's like when I bought it from Pat and stuff. This first thing was, oh, I got to put a V8 in this. Oh, yeah. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. So. It, and, wouldn't, it wouldn't be the same to have a hot rod with, without a V8 in it. Well, yeah. You, you know, you if know? you're going to build something and if you're going to start from scratch and if you're going to create something, just do it right away. Like, exactly. You know? Well, um, the MGs, the Camaros, yeah, yeah, the idea is, is to custom is to make this you know this is mine this is this is unique this mm -hmm. is this is where we uh, you know it, it's just unique right. and and um 
And that's what I wanted and stuff. I wanted, I wanted a stance. I wanted, uh, I wanted all of that and everything. And and um, um, well, there's only one way to do it: is just do it. I guess right. you know. And and um, sometimes the the road to get to that point's longer than you think. Exactly. Exactly. And and in comes Travis and stuff mm -hmm. because I was at a complete and total standstill. You know, I can. I can do things, I can put things together, uh, but uh, I'm not a body man. <laughs> and <laughs> these hey, guys. That's good because a lot of people claim to be, but they're not. Right? Yeah. You know? well, I, I, I knew my limitations, I mm -hmm. guess, you know. And, and so that's when I went to him and stuff. And when he came down to the garage and opened up the door and he looked at it, and I was looking at him when he came through the door just because I wanted to see his reaction and stuff and his eyes just lit and then he goes we can do this I saw that look that yeah this is cool yeah we can make this happen and and because like I said I, I I just I was just having so much issues with the body and stuff mm -hmm. that, I know. First time to let a pro do it. Yeah, and I know the the first time I saw it, um, I was excited because it was it was different. It wasn't you know your stock. It wasn't a all original. And I knew like this was a chance that we were able to put our shoot metal skills. We could you know our customization because this car is going to need it. And so I'm like, oh, this is awesome. We can put our twist on this thing. And you had a good start to it. And um, so it, it got me excited already. I could I could vision like I started seeing you know I I knew right away that the fenders that you had originally picked out like I I already like no we, we got to change that it's just I I seen it right away like we're gonna do something completely different here, but the overall I was, I was excited because it was just like to build that thing from scratch basically is what because it wasn't like I said it, you weren't just redoing an original car you were taking and it was a highly modified I knew that we'd get to put our hands in on this thing get the sheet metal done the right way and and I'll tell you it was it was a challenge I'm not gonna lie to you Jay but they turned out you guys amazing. did a you know, bang I, up freaking I, job I, I do I, I like it and it's even fun it's Really, not much for tall guys, but it's a fun little car to drive. <laughs> yeah. It really is. Yeah, it's cool. you know? this, this, as I remember, the, you know, the windshield is right about here, you yeah. know, and stuff. But I guess I'll slow it. Yeah, it's know. it'll work. So, did you, growing up, were you always like into German cars? Did you have like muscle cars when you I grew up? That like why why I mean, other than buying it from your like why did you always have a thing for British cars or did? Or not really, or just kind I, of I, fell in your lap, or no, no, I I, I loved the way the European cars handle. Mm -hmm. I love the corners, you know. All right, so American cars, it's a drag strip. Yep. You know, yeah, you know, yeah, and and that, but I did have a two 60, different styles of engineering, really. I did have a '69 Camaro that freaking rocked. Really, that thing was crazy fast and fun. Yeah. That it, it it I didn't want a hot. It it was it wasn't a hot rod, but it could go like a streak. Yeah. And corner like hell would not have it. Really. Yeah, it was it it was it was the first drifter. <laughs> oh, really? oh, oh yeah, you could come out of a corner sideways, and it was pretty fun. Oh wow! Hell I think yeah. I remember you telling me a story about that. Yeah. I think I do that, recall. That thing was crazy awesome, but then. Gas got to ooh, a buck seventy-five a gallon. Oh, gee, wow! Jeez, that's couldn't pretty high. Couldn't afford it anymore, so I sold it. But I, the first car I had was a '59 Plymouth Station wagon. And I got it for my brother. He bought it in California, and it was just a beige station wagon. And I sanded it all down and everything. And and uh, Jerry. Libel, and I painted it pumpkin orange. And we put a flat black hood on it, and then <laughs> <laughs> tore the interior on it. It was all flat black. It was, it was a freak mobile. Yeah, it was pretty cool shit. <laughs> it, it was really your freak mobile. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but that and then traded that in on that '69 Camaro, 
and fifteen hundred bucks. So pretty fair deal. It was, yeah, yeah. I wish I had them both back. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> you know? So. So what is? So I met your wife Audrey. She's a sweetheart. Um, how did she? Because I, I, if I recall, did did she get booted out of the garage for a spot for this car, or was she still <laughs> no, no, she I, still was able to keep her car in the garage? What did what was her intake on all this? Well, I had I had the area for it, and I built the garage with the intention of doing this and stuff, and so um, um, I got I got it all tore down and everything, and so the frame was just sitting there and stuff. And then I go, why? Well, I, I don't know where I'm going to go with this and stuff. And so um, she goes, well, why don't you just make what you want and stuff? And so she was pretty cool with it then. Uh, then the bedroom was right beside it and stuff. So I, I had a curfew as far as. Oh yeah. Yeah. So she did lay the law down a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, it was. So, Some stipulations. There was stipulations yeah. there, stuff. But well, she, she was cool. About yeah, it, but. she's I, she is a sweetheart. Yeah, she's she's a, a really very nice lady. Yeah, very nice lady. Jay, what like I mean, what drive do you, the just, shoes just off? Drive just drive it. Just drive the wheels off. You know, whatever. Uh, deep purple. Nobody's yeah. gonna take my car. Gonna drive it to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> there is you that go. gonna be the first song played in it? I don't know. Yeah. I, I think so. You yeah. know, I you're a little bit of a. There's an awful lot of. You're a little bit of a, a, a music kind of sewer as well. I I remember one time I picked you up and I happened to have some Jay Z playing in my truck and you picked right up on it. Oh yeah. 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 Definitely. Yeah. Tom Waits. Yeah. John Prine. Absolutely. God, love the shit. Love it to death. I'm trying. I, that's what I'm trying to think. You know. Out of respect for John Prine, I think uh, first song is going to be Billy the Bum. Okay. Just, just a slow mellow cruise. You know, after I get a few miles yeah. on it and stuff, then we'll a, then we'll rock out. In a hundred twenty thousand dollar we'll, custom. We'll, yeah. yeah. We'll Put change, that song on. We'll yeah. change the track to some of the more heavier metal. <laughs> yeah. Which, which I do know you listen to. I've been over to your house and you 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 hit it with some heavy metal too a little bit. Oh, yeah. So yeah. yeah. Everybody can't get over my genre because it goes from Jackie Gleason to Django Reinhardt to Nails to you know. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think modest that's, mouse to whatever. Yeah, and so. I think this car is kind of uh a little bit of a reflection of kind of how you are you know you just you kind of have your own style and you don't really give a rat's ass what people think you know yeah it's, yeah well that's well, cool yeah. i mean it's uh um well it's it's supposed to give people you know i enjoy the hell out i enjoy looking at it i mm -hmm. i i've loved i've loved the process itself. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's almost uh, surreal. Mm -hmm. uh, it's only been 25 years, 30 years of, of, of well, hell, if you want to go back to it, it's, all, it's only been 50 years of dreaming about it and stuff, you know, and it's still That's rather surreal to, 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 to be able to get behind the wheel and go away, you know. So I know we've had this car, so it'll be what, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, five years, I think we've we had the car doing. On and off. Yep, on and off, sheet metal, um, we, you know, making the interior, uh, the wiring, you know, getting everything, doing the, the paint and everything on it. And you had it 18 years before I picked it up? If, we, if not more so it's probably 95 when i bought it oh, oh, wow. and then it sat there and i pushed it around the yard for you know a couple of years and then just bought the bullet and bit the bullet and started on it started on it and stuff or did this question arise did audrey say what are you doing with that car exactly yeah yeah yeah, so it, it, the project, um, 
kind of came to a stalemate. You reached out, we grabbed it, put our twist on it, kind of really took, I think, your thoughts and what you kind of had in mind, recreated some stuff. Um, but you remember and, I had those fenders I, up here? Yeah, stuff? those cannons. See, and that's what I was going for was that old Brutus line. Yeah. You know, because it just slowed down and then it jumped back up mm -hmm. again. Um, what car, like the old Buicks? Remember the 56, 57, 58 Buicks? That piece of chrome that yeah. came down and then jumped up and yeah, stuff? Yeah, on the side. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That's why I always kind of thought that this would really be cool because um, when Sonny graduated from uh, medical school and we were out in um, Seattle and went out to the um, Olympic Peninsula, we were driving back and then going along down to, she was, uh, did her residency in, in Boise and then driving along and stuff and I came across or we passed this guy and it was a 57 Ford a little bit darker gray but then he had this orange stripe on it that was just freaking phenomenal you know and then uh -huh. I, that's what I said you know can we can we put a stripe on this yeah. Yeah, can we do this and yeah. stuff? you know but uh, I like it. I like the color. Yeah. I like. I like. There's so many angles, so many round things, so many. Yeah, the car's got enough lines where I don't think a stripe is necessary. Yeah, I it's, know. See, mm -hmm. I was, I was a, I was thinking ghost flames. It's a freaking hot rod. Yeah, you know? got to have flames on it. <laughs> you gotta. Yeah. Well, it's on the motor. Yeah, we got it. We got it in the engine bay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we. Uh, I think we did. A pretty good job on it. I actually had to have to no, say because we uh, you, you guys it uh, fucking not. Yeah, I think it's. Uh, I pardon think my it, French. I think it's I'm very. Bleep that all out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think it's very very tasteful. It does definitely get a lot of looks. And like I said, even taking it to the car shows, you know, people are yeah, just drawn to it. And I really wish that like, we could have a stock one sitting right next to it so people can look at the two and realize just the transformation. Mm -hmm. But yet there's so much stuff that is exactly the same car to car but the things that are different that we you know that we've changed and that your ideas are compared to the two cars and how so far to the other spectrum you know like yeah. widening yep. the you know i think if i remember i think the whole car is like 14 inches wider than a stock one you know with the fenders and everything just to get everything tucked in there and when you show people a picture of what a stock one looks like you know, their eyes light up because they're just like, wow. I mean, it's crazy, the transformation, but yet you still see the similarities in it. So yep. I think people a few respect people, it. I think a lot of people do respect it. So um, in April, um, we took this thing uh, about as complete as possible to um, a pretty high -end car show here in town. Mm -hmm. And um, it got a great reception. I think there was a lot of people that must have noticed that this ain't known your, this isn't your average 56 MG because uh, there is, I think, close to 80 high-end cars, and I'm talking high-end cars at that car show, and this was top 25. Mm -hmm. So, um, which is cool. Yeah. Which is cool. Yeah. But and I think there could have been 200 cars at that car show. I think this still would have been top 25 because you weren't it seeing just stood the, out. you weren't seeing the same. You weren't seeing the same Mopar and Pony cars and stuff like that. This is a well done custom car and it's a one on one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'd love to have a 69 Camaro again and stuff, but customize it the way that I want it, the way that I think yeah. that it should drive and everything and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, this was, this was handy and this was, this was always a dream also and stuff, you know, and, and well, who knows, the, maybe sometime I'll have a 60. Well, you kind of got the vision of having uh, it's never the best late. of both worlds. Yeah, it's never yeah. too late, Jay. Yeah. I mean, there's, so we're not. they still make 69s out there we can get our hands on and we can definitely make that come true for you too. Well, so. <laughs> yeah, I just buy a chassis. And yeah. And oh, yeah. And it's OEM, yeah. so start fresh. You, you yeah. just do it yeah. all. And there's definitely enough parts around that you can definitely build a car, you know, how you'd want it. But 1,500 horsepower. Oh yeah, Absolutely. I'd say at least. Yep. See that 69 Camaro I had and stuff, you could put a 2x4 on edge. 
and it would push it down the street. Yeah. You know what's awesome, Travis, <laughs> is our last two customers when we talk about future projects, every single one of them is over 1,000 horsepower. Yeah. 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 How cool is that, though? I mean, it's great, yeah. great numbers. Yeah. 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 And just nobody's going to take my car. No, I'm going to drive it to the ground. No, just we're going to kill every single up. tire possible. Yeah. 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 I'm glad. See, uh, I always had plans of having a trailer. You know, to pull behind okay. this thing and stuff. So I've got, I've got two extra rear wheels to, to burn on. There you go. Yeah. Hell yeah. And a spare tire. Hell yeah. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. So. You don't even need a trailer to do that. You just, <laughs> just yeah. take it out. It's, and do some, yeah, triple A. Just make sure there. like you're within a mile of a tire shop. Yeah. yeah. Call ahead and make sure they got your tires. Yeah. And then burn them suckers. <laughs> yeah. 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 So. But, well, it's been a pleasure, Jay. I, I always. You know the thing that we've said before, even in our podcast, that. You know, from being in this industry and doing what we do, I think the enjoyment and the thing that I, it, it's, it's an accomplishment for me to build something for a customer and that's, that's always a great feeling. And, but I think what really I appreciate always, it seems like from day one, it's like you're a phone number, you're, you, you're a customer, but by the time we're over, it's like, we just made another friend, you know, mm -hmm. it's like now we're just not under, you know, you're just not a customer to us. I mean, you, you stop in, you visit, you, you pop your head in. I mean, we've, uh, you Bring became a friend. Yeah. And, uh, I think that's what I love the most that being in this industry, I've created so much more of a friend base just from doing customer stuff for for customers and by the time the jobs are done um it's it's crazy how we get repetitive customers just like you that just stop in the yeah, shop just, hey what are you working on now what's going on i you know i want to stop in and say hi and it and it, it makes me feel good that that we created this like large hot rod family that people come down and, and they still see us and see what we got working on and and I love it you know and that's a completely different feeling for me that I I appreciate it you know it's cool to see something that you you've helped build but also it's not hey thanks and you're out of here it's you know it's repetitive you stop in like I said and I love it you know your wife stops in and says hi and she's again a sweetheart if anybody knows your wife she's she yeah. she's a she's a doll and uh uh, it's uh it, it makes me feel good that that being in this industry that you create that big hot rod family and it really makes me feel good that you know people appreciate it so it, not only did you give us something to work but i also like i said i appreciate the fact that you became a good friend of this of this uh industry and of this company and uh we love it i i appreciate that and and i appreciate the fact that um it's it's fun to come in and see the evolution of of all the projects going mm -hmm. on and stuff you know it, it's like and i i don't want to bother anybody and stuff but i just mm -hmm. it's kind of fun just yeah. come in and google yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know? It it, yeah. It just just in in awe of uh, of everything so jesse's freaking phenomenal yeah he is you know and and i don't know uh, many of the other guys and stuff but uh, um but from what I've seen their work and stuff, mm -hmm. yeah. pretty, it's pretty straightforward. It, it's, it's awesome, and 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 that's what, that's why I picked you and stuff because, you know, it's not a job. This is a passion. It's an art. Yep. You know, which, um, which goes into you know, mm -hmm. you, you can do this, you can do that, but it's an art form. You have to you have to envision things. You have to see things, mm -hmm. uh, and. Um, and you do. That's cool stuff. Yeah, well, we kind of try to have the same passion um, as you have towards your car. We don't really treat it as a customer's car. We would treat these cars as if they were our own cars. And it goes a long ways. Mm -hmm. Well, he did that so many times. You know, I'd stop in, and and he's sitting there. <laughs> yeah. You know, and all right, cool. You know. And I didn't have any pressure. I did. Well, you, you said six months. You said this. You said that. You know, quality takes time. Mm -hmm. I don't care if it took another five years. Yeah. Not. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's why I was saying, like, we, we had it for five. Um, yeah, I'd say pretty close 
to five, at least four and a half for sure. And, um, and we weren't working on it every day, but you know, it was still the fact that um, you know, we made progress when we can. And um, it, it, you're right though, this stuff doesn't happen overnight. And a lot of people think that what you see on TV is reality and it's it's really not. Like you can't that build a car in 45 for minutes. Those. Yeah, and, that takes and if you're good at what you do to do it right, it's it's going to take time, you know? Yep. And we, and not not to bring up nothing bad, but I think we both experienced that when, when I got your car in here that you, you did reach out for some help from another person and you can't build a car out of bondo. If you're gonna do it, you're gonna do it right and yep. that takes metal and, and experience and, and there's you know the right way of doing it. And um, if, if we would have done it instead of weighing what is it, twenty eight hundred pounds, it would have weighed forty eight hundred yeah, pounds. Yeah, we we took a lot of mud off a this lot of and mud. a lot and we've and we replaced <clears throat> it with sheet metal like it was supposed to be done yeah. and but you know Full you're only metal jacket. Yeah. And the thing that's nice is, you, you know, it's, it's just bettering your investment, you know, knowing that what you have underneath this is a solid car and it's done correctly. And, and even stopping down to see, you know, our um, production and everything that, you know, how uh, the steps that we did, you got to see it happen. You know, you stopped down quite a bit. You got to see the progress in the car. So you were still in charge of everything. You know, you still got to see how everything was going together. And that's got to make you feel good too, not just drop it off, call me when it's done. I mean, we try to bring you in as a part of it too. It's it's your car, you yeah. know, so. Yeah, you know, it, it, it kind of put me out when you took those lights off, the headlights off. Yeah, because I, I just had that line, you know, and stuff. But now I see, I see where you went, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I see what you did and yeah. stuff, and, and it wasn't bad. Yeah. You know, so. well. <laughs> I'll, I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> so, but it, yeah, it, it, it broke my heart. <laughs> yeah, I, and I could see that, you know, and that's why sometimes it's hard because a lot of customers have a vision, and us as you know, we're the artists, and like things have to flow in a certain way, you know, and that's how we work, you know, with a lot of stuff. So, um, I, I, I'm still glad that we, you know, approached it. And I know you were trying to go a different route. We we compromised, I feel, and hopefully we got. You did good. Yeah. You did good. Yeah, it it, it worked out and stuff. It, um, yeah. Um, I'm not dis. I'm 100% satisfied. Well, it's a cool car. Perfect. Yeah, it's yeah. A fun car. Very yeah. Cool. So if you want to check out more pictures of this, you can check it out on our website, DakotaCustoms.com. And, um, or feel free to stop in. Yeah, or come in if you're- Doors open eight to six. Yeah, if so you're in the neighborhood, stop in and see it. Please stop on by. So yeah, you can check us out, our Facebook also, uh, Dakota Customs, Instagram, Dakota Customs, check us out on our YouTube. And uh, thanks for listening and we'll see you next week. See you guys. Awesome stuff. <laughs>